The Lenovo C940 is a smaller 14-inch 2-in-1 premium laptop. Let's check it out in this detailed review and help you decide if it's something you should consider. For the specs, my config has a 10th gen Intel i7-1065G7 quad-core iSleek processor, just Intel Iris graphics here, 16GB of faster LPDDR4X memory and dual channel, there's a 512GB NVMe M.2 SSD, and a 14-inch 1080p 60Hz touchscreen. For network connectivity, it's got Wi-Fi 5 and Bluetooth 5. However, it's too thin for Ethernet, so you'll need a dongle if you need that. The C940 specs can be customized when ordering. You can find examples and updated prices linked in the description. The laptop is made out of aluminium and it's available in two colours. I've got the iron grey version here and it looks clean and professional. For a thinner machine, the build quality feels quite solid and there are no sharp corners or edges anywhere. Lenovo lists the starting weight as 1.35 kilos and mine was a little more than this. With the small 65 watt power brick and cables for charging included, the total weight rises to 1.7 kilos. The dimensions are on the slim aside for a 14 inch laptop, coming in under 1.6 centimeters thick. This allows it to have just 7 millimeter thin screen bezels on the sides. Generally two in one touchscreen devices like this have thinner bezels to help you avoid accidentally pressing the screen. But I found the bottom chin large enough to fulfill this role. I found it to work fine as a touchscreen and it apparently supports 10 finger gestures so make sure you don't have any more. There's a pen included. It's around the back on the right corner and charges while inserted into the machine. Due to its position, I had great difficulty trying to pull it out with the laptop in front of me on a desk. It was much easier to pull it out once you flip it over into tablet mode, which to be fair, is probably when you're most likely to want to use the pen, though I think it still would have been useful to have easy access in laptop mode too. I expected a nice satisfying magnetic click or something when putting the pen back in, but that wasn't the case. Though it does stay in place once you slide it back in place. The touchscreen otherwise worked well for me, no issues to report. It's got a glossy finish, and Lenovo says the 1080p version uses a 400 nit panel, while the 4K model is brighter at 500 nits. Using the Spyder 5, I found my 1080p model a bit under the 400 nit mark, but this can vary between panels. The contrast ratio was above average compared to most I've tested too. As for color gamut, we're looking at 95 5% of sRGB, 66% of NTSC, 71% of Adobe RGB, and 71% of DCI-P3. So all right results. Plenty if you're just using it for office work, or okay for some content creation. The 4K 500 nit panel is HDR and supports 90% of DCI-P3, so definitely worth considering if you need better colors. There was no backlight bleed in my unit, an excellent result. However, this will vary between laptop and panel. Screen flex was very minor when intentionally trying to move it due to the metal lid. However, it highlighted that the laptop was easier to slide around than expected. The feet underneath didn't really feel rubbery or sticky. It's hard to describe, but I guess it seems closer to a plastic, so there may be some slippage when pushed. The Yoga 360 hinge also contains the speaker, so it basically faces you when in laptop mode, but still also faces out in tablet mode. The speakers sounded excellent, far above average and some of the best I've ever tested in a laptop. They were clear, there was some bass, and they were loud enough at maximum volume. The latency mon results looked alright too. The laptop can be opened up with one finger until the screen gets to 90 degrees or so. Then it starts to tip back, demonstrating that in laptop mode there's more weight to Towards the back. However, it did sit fine on my lap. Despite the thinner bezels, the camera is found above the display in the center. There's no IR for Windows Hello, but it's got a physically sliding privacy shutter. The camera looks pretty decent for 720p and sounds pretty average, and typing makes a kind of weird sound on the keyboard. The keyboard has white backlighting which illuminates all keys and secondary key functions. There's no numpad in the 14 inch model, however the larger 15 inch version does have that. I liked typing on the keyboard. The keys felt a little clicky to press. Here's how typing sounds to give you an idea of what to expect. 
There are two levels of key brightness which can be adjusted by holding the function key and pressing the spacebar. Keyboard flex was on the lower side considering how thin it is, likely owing to that metal body. The precision touchpad clicks down anywhere when pressed. I found it to work quite well without any problems and was happy that it's basically taking up as much space as it can. There's a fingerprint scanner to the right of the touchpad just below the keyboard. I found it to work fast and with good accuracy. Fingerprints and dirt didn't really show up very easily on my darker matte finish. But as a smooth surface, it's easy to clean with a cloth. Like all glossy touchscreens, fingerprint buildup will occur over time unless you just stick to using the pen. On the left from the back, there's a USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-A port, two Type-C Thunderbolt 3 ports with DisplayPort support, and either can be used to charge the device followed by a 3.5mm audio combo jack. The right just has a power button towards the back. I pressed it a couple of times while picking it up before I got used to it, which puts it to sleep by default. But you can always change what the button does in Windows if this is an issue for you. The back has air exhaust holes while the front sticks out a little for you to get your finger in and open the lid. Underneath is pretty clean, with just some air intake vents towards the back. To get inside, you need to take out four TR5 screws. Then there are three more Phillips head screws hidden underneath the back rubber foot. I found it a little tricky to open. Once inside, we've got the battery taking up a large portion of space down the bottom, and the single M.2 slot for the storage towards the right just above it. The Wi-Fi chip is soldered to the board, and so is the memory, so make sure you buy it with enough memory for what you need. We can also see the space that's dedicated to the pen. In addition to the speaker bar below the screen, there are a couple of speakers towards the front on the bottom. Despite the battery only being 60 watt hours, the C940 definitely knows how to use it. I've tested it with the screen brightness at 50%, background apps disabled, and keyboard lighting off. And in my YouTube playback test, it lasted for under 11 hours putting it right at the top. Though due to the lack of discrete graphics, the regular gaming test was not possible. The Lenovo Vantage software lets you manage the system. You can change settings or update software and BIOS through here. Though with the C940, I didn't see any option to change performance modes. I've tested thermals in a 21 degrees Celsius ambient room temperature. At idle, it was quite cool at 29 degrees Celsius. With the Ada 64 CPU stress test running, it did initially spike above 80 degrees Celsius, but before long, it settled down in the mid-60s with a slight improvement once undervolted with throttle stop. Although clock speed peaked at 3.5GHz on all four cores, around 2.7GHz was where things settled in at, and this is due to the lower wattage applied to the processor. This is a 15 watt chip after all. It's worth noting it was running up to 20 watts or so closer to the start of the testing. When we look at 5 runs of Cinebench, we can see how the result slows down over time as these throttle limits get hit. As for the external temperatures where you'll actually be putting your hands, at idle it was in the low 20s, a very cool result. Even with the CPU stress test running, it's only around 40 degrees. Just a little warm to the touch, owing to the metal chassis which will conduct heat. Let's have a listen to fan noise next. It was completely silent at idle, and then even with the CPU stress test going as a worst case, it wasn't much louder at all. Next, let's find out how the C940 holds up in games. We're not expecting much due to the lack of discrete graphics, so I'll just test the Intel Iris graphics at 720p with some basic titles to get an idea of what's possible. Dota 2 runs on basically anything, so almost 60 FPS was possible even at ultra settings, with much higher frame rates at low, where even the 1% low is higher than the screen's 60Hz refresh rate. CSGO was tested with the Uletical FPS benchmark, and again around 60FPS maxed out, though well over 100FPS was possible at minimum settings. Overwatch was tested in the practice range. At high settings and above, it felt pretty stuttery and laggy. It wasn't too bad at low though, not great, but usable. I've used Adobe Premiere to export one of my laptop review videos at 4K. As the C940 doesn't have discrete NVIDIA or Radeon graphics, it's one of the slower results out of the laptops tested. However, it is beating the Acer Swift 5 with the same processor, which was in last place. I've used Crystal Diskmark to test the storage, and the 512GB NVMe M.2 drive was performing well, but expect different results with different storage options. For updated pricing, check the links in the description, as prices will change over time.
At the time of recording, in the US, the C940 is under $1100 US dollars, though it is on sale. Here in Australia, the starting price through the Lenovo website is $2700 Australian dollars. It's higher even after the currency conversion as the base spec seems to be higher than the US config, which starts with an i5, but customizations can be made when ordering. With all of that in mind, let's conclude by summarizing the good and bad aspects of the Lenovo C940 2-in-1 laptop. Overall, I thought the metal build quality was good. There was minimal screen and chassis flex when intentionally pushing down, and I personally liked the clean design. The keyboard has a nice and clicky feeling. The touchpad works well and is a good size despite it being a smaller 14 inch model, and the speakers sounded excellent. The battery life was amazing, giving me one of the best results out of all laptops tested in the YouTube playback test. The C940 has Type-C charging too, along with Thunderbolt support, and the power brick is on the smaller size, making the whole package fairly portable. The 1080p touchscreen had basically no bleed, decent brightness and colour gamut, but consider getting the 4K model if you need better colours and brightness for tasks like content creation. Even when under heavy load, the C940 ran on the cooler side and didn't get loud at all compared to most others I've tested. Very light gaming is possible with the Intel Iris graphics at 720p, but don't expect much. The lack of discrete GPU will also slow down other tasks like video editing, but for other general tasks that don't need GPU acceleration, I found it to perform well, beating out the Acer Swift 5 with same processor in my Premiere export test. As for things I didn't like, it could be a bit slippery when on a desk if you push it lightly due to the lack of sticky rubber feet. The pen was challenging to remove with the laptop in laptop mode, though this was much easier once you fold it into tablet mode. The price doesn't seem too bad for a thinner and lighter machine, but that's definitely what you're paying for here, as you can of course get more powerful specs in a larger machine for less money. It just depends what your priorities are. I could recommend the C940 for someone that needs portability with a long battery life and isn't looking for a gaming or hardcore video editing laptop. Something for say office use or travel, once that's allowed again, would be perfect use cases for it. Let me know what you thought about the Lenovo C940 2-in-1 laptop down in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, get subscribed for future laptop reviews and tech videos like this one.